Hi guys, welcome back to The Wargamer and another World War II painting tutorial. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can tackle the Waffen SS Plain Tree Camouflage in its Autumn variant. And you're probably thinking, you've already tackled that and you would be entirely correct. Now, this video isn't a redo. This is, in fact, I'm just going to be exploring some different techniques for painting miniatures and hopefully you'll be able to compare this to the previous video and see the results from this video and make up your mind as to which you prefer. Now in this video I'm going to be using an airbrush and as well as this airbrush I'm also going to be using some uh, different paints. So these are from AK Interactive. Now this is a set which is designed specifically for use with Waffen SS Plain Tree Autumn Camouflage so we should get some good colour approximations from this set. So in addition to these items you also need the following for this tutorial. An airbrush, mine is a HPC Plus powered by an Iwata SmartJet Pro compressor. You also need some paints and now be using the paints from AK Interactive's Waffen SS Fall Winter Camouflage Set. We also need some paint thinner and as I'm using AK Interactive's paints, I'll also be using AK's thinner as well. You'll also need some brown washes and again I'll be using another AK Interactive product, brown glaze and also dark brown glaze from their Uniform Definition filter range. You will also need some cocktail sticks or toothpicks, as well as a small brush. And finally, you will need a miniature to paint. You can see I've already primed this particular miniature using a grey primer. So once you've collected all of your materials, we can get started. The first area of our camo scheme that I'll be painting will be the base colour of the camouflage smock. For this, I'll be using brown grey through an airbrush. Taken straight from the bottle, the paint is a little too thick to be used in our airbrush, so we need to thin it down a little. To do this, we'll need some thinner. Now whilst there are many different thinners available, it's generally advised that you use the same brand of thinner as the paint you are using to avoid any potential problems. If you don't have a thinner, then you could instead use distilled water, but a thinner is preferable. So start by adding in a small amount of thinner to your airbrush. A few drops will do as I try to keep only a small amount of paint in my airbrush at any one time. Then you can add in a drop of paint into the thinner and mix the two together with a brush until you have the consistency of milk. If it's too thick, add in some thinners. If it's too thin, add in some more paint. Once you are happy with the paint's thickness, make a few test sprays at around 20 psi. If the consistency is correct, then you should have a light mist and we can start applying the paint to the miniature. When painting the miniature, you'll want to again use around 20 psi of pressure and apply some thin layers to the model, holding the nozzle around three inches away from the surface when you're painting. Don't worry too much about getting full coverage on your first coat. Instead, allow your first layer to dry and then apply another light layer of paint over the top. Repeat until you're happy with the color. Now that we have our base color, we want to add a little definition to our surface. We'll be doing this by spraying a lighter color over the smock from above. To achieve this lighter color, we'll be using our original base layer color of brown gray mixed with some golden flesh. By mixing in golden flesh instead of a white paint, we'll be able to achieve a lighter highlight color without losing the color, making the fabric look faded. We want to mix the two paints in roughly equal parts, and much like before, we want to create that milky consistency by adding in some thinners. Like before, we will be painting this layer using our airbrush. Now to achieve the zenithal lighting effect, we need to hold the airbrush from above the miniature. This will ensure that only the top surfaces, such as the shoulders, head and upper parts of the arms, will be covered. Again, use light coats for this and keep the brush moving. Now that we have our base colour down, we can start to work on the camouflage pattern. For this, we'll be using three colours of paint, but we want to start off with brown-black. The set we are using recommends dark brown, but personally, don't find this quite dark enough. So for this and the next few steps, I will instead be making use of a cocktail stick to apply the paint to the surface of the model. To do this, simply dip the stick into the paint so you have a very small amount on the tip. Then you can lightly touch the surface of the miniature with the stick to leave a small round dot. Repeat this process until you have several irregular, roughly oval shaped areas of dots across your smock. Then you can fill in the middle of these areas with some more dots to create a splotch effect. Continuing with our cocktail stick technique, we now want to apply some beige brown spots to over the brown black spots we applied in the last step. Whenever you're painting camo, I would recommend keeping some reference images handy to ensure you're getting the realistic pattern. The final step in applying our camouflage pattern is to add in some light brown spots using brown spots. Now that we have our camouflage pattern completed, we can start to think about shading. We will be doing this in three distinct steps, and for each of these steps, we'll be using an acrylic glaze. 
For our first step, we again want to use our airbrush. We will need to mix in a small amount of acrylic thinner with a small amount of brown glaze, ideally in equal parts. So with our diluted glaze, we want to use our airbrush to apply a light layer over the surface of the smock. This will help to unify the colors and make the pattern look more realistic. I would recommend you apply this first layer very lightly, allowing it to dry and then applying a second layer over the top. In this next step, we'll once again be using a glaze through our airbrush, but this time we want to use a slightly darker color, therefore I'll be using a dark brown glaze instead. This time I won't be diluting the glaze and adding it to the airbrush neat. So here we will be essentially reversing one of our previous steps where we sprayed a lighter color from above. As we want to create the effect of shading, we instead want to spray the glaze from beneath the miniature. This will settle on the underside of the arms and the various folds in the cloth, creating the effect of shadow. This will help to complete our zenithal lighting effect. The final step in painting our smock requires us to use the dark brown glaze once again, but this time with a normal brush, albeit one with a fine tip. Again, we will not need to thin down our glaze and we can use it straight from the pot. Instead of applying this glaze across a larger area as in the last couple of steps, we instead want to target this glaze into some of the recesses in the cloth. This will ensure that any areas that were missed in the last step will still have some shading applied to them. And so, after allowing the glaze to dry, here we have the completed smock. And so that concludes this video on painting the Waffen SS in a plain tree autumn camouflage. So hopefully you have a better understanding of how you can achieve that technique using an airbrush and also picked up a few airbrushing techniques as well. Now, if you've watched my previous video, you'll be able to compare the two and choose which kind of technique and which approach to painting your models you'll want to go for. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and also make sure you subscribe to kept up to date with all of my future videos. I've also got a Patreon page if you wanted to support me, I'd be very, very grateful. And I've also included a full list of the paints used in this tutorial in the description below. And if I can find them, I'm also gonna try and find some approximations for the paints used as well from uh, maybe a few of the main manufacturers, just so you have a better idea as to which other paints you could use instead. But you're never gonna get the exact approximation by using another companies because no two manufacturers seem to be ever exactly the same. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.